Hey guys, it's Tommy TM. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Heartland Towers. Um, this episode, as you can see from the thumbnail title and what I'm doing at the moment, um, we are putting in a huge wooden coaster. Um, now, this is going to be a traditional wooden coaster, you know, essentially just going for airtime, um, lots of lots of hills, lots of drops. Not It's not necessarily a sort of um, Wicker Man at Alton Towers kind of style wooden coaster although I do like that style and I think the Wicker Man is a fantastic ride and um, I wanted to kind of have a bit of a a bit of a traditional coaster just kind of going back and forth um, and I thought what this would do as well is provide a bit of a backdrop to the park and um, now obviously I'm building this on a PS5 but my intention is to not go over the PS4 limit which may sound a little bit weird um, because what you know what why would you uh, why would you limit yourself to that um, my idea is I want this park to be accessible to a lot of people in the workshop basically um, and I know at the moment because PS5s are still very hard to come by annoyingly um, that a lot of the PS5 parks tend to get lost on the workshop so with the parks I'm building this one and obviously Stage Door Studios I'm trying to make them as accessible as possible for people on the workshop um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and stick to the limit. If if I get close and I feel as though I really have to go over it, then I will. I'm not, you know, I'm not sort of sticking by it no matter what. Um, but that is my sort of aim. Um, so this is going to provide a bit of a backdrop in terms of the landscape. Um, if you, well, when, you know, when I zoom out and you see it shortly, um, you will see that it kind of goes diagonally across the back, which I quite like. Um, so I'll kind of fill out the space in front of it and then see just see, just see how the park takes shape. So I don't really have a massive idea in mind as to what I'm going to do um, for the rest of the park yet. Here I'm just putting in a transfer track for the coaster. So obviously just starting the construction of another station there and then deleting it as necessary and just building along the side of another piece of track. The you know the, the the annoying thing about this is obviously the, the transfer track itself wouldn't have the the wooden um, supports at the side, but you can't get rid of you can't get rid of them on uh, on a wooden coaster in the game, so they just kind of have to be there. But you know you, you've just got to sort of imagine that the, uh, the the railings at the side would not be there and they'd be easily you know dropped um, down just to make it easier for the trains to transfer onto the different tracks themselves. In terms, in terms of the, the theming, it's not necessarily following a particular theme. Uh, obviously this is being built near the Falcon coaster and also the um, Falcon flat ride that we put in in the last episode. And it's, you know, it's, it's, in, it's in this sort of general foresty area, which is why I thought a wooden coaster would kind of blend in well with a lot of the wood, uh, a lot of the trees, etc. I say blend in, it stands out like a sore thumb because of how tall it is, but you get what I mean, it sort of matches the uh, matches the area anyway. So uh, yeah, I, it's not going for any particular theme as such, just uh, you know, just like a, a general wooden coaster. Um, you'll see what I call it shortly, um, if you haven't already seen from the thumbnail itself. Um, the, the station itself, I've not gone for any in particular sort of detail in in terms of the the style of or theme but what i did want to do on this coaster which i haven't done on any coaster before is i wanted to put a separate ride operators booth above the um above the track where the train leaves the station um so a bit like you would have in other you know in in real life theme parks where instead of you know the, the operator doesn't always stand at the side of the station and unfortunately in Planet Coaster you can't move the operator so the best way around that is to hide the operator and then install your own animatronics like so uh, and then we've just got some uh, some attendants here at the side just to make sure that you're all clipped in. Um, at the side of the transfer track I wanted to put in a little bit of a backstage area not not hugely um, not you know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going kind of out, out of my way to do this it's not really taken that long to do but I think it just adds a nice little touch and kind of just it, it, it kind of just finishes off this back area quite nicely. So um, yeah, we've got this little staircase and footpath up to the transfer track itself, and then the bit of land down here. I'm just kind of spraying concrete down just to provide a bit of a you know a bit of a backdrop area. I've got some uh, buffer stoppers, some train stops in the uh, on the transfer track there inside. You might not be able to see that that clearly. Um, and then just around just around the track 
uh, all I'm going to do just to kind of blend it in is literally place trees after trees after trees and I, I go through this I, I won't show you the whole thing because it is very time consuming uh, even on times 3.5 which you're on at the minute um, it is time consuming but I literally go through trees ro rotating almost every single one as I put it down so they all look a bit different um, and then I pick another type of tree and I do exactly the same thing again just so it all kind of blends in now with wooden coasters obviously they are very tall you can't really theme them when they're up high in the air um, but as long as you kind of surround them near the bottom and just give them a little bit of a little bit of scenery um, it makes all the bit all the difference when you know when you're looking at it on the ride and off it um, here I'm just kind of fencing off the backstage area just with the metal link fencing um, I mean th this for me is the greatest scenery piece in the game the, the the metal fencing really is such a brilliant little tool to use um, and then just just down the back here I wanted to kind of I was kind of flicking through, looking at the vehicles, looking at what I could put in. Um, so I did set up to the scenery just for the just for the blueprints, um, because the you know the, the standard scenery pieces don't come with tyres, and it's just quicker to pick up a scenery piece that already has them. So yeah, just putting in a few a few pieces, a few bins, a um, few barriers there, a, a vehicle, um, you know, barrels. It, it it really is just kind of putting a few pieces in that you may you know you may find backstage at a um, at a transfer track to a coaster um, you may you may not <laughs> but yeah it's just putting a few pieces that don't really stand stand out really they're, they're kind of blending quite well here I'm just putting the cabling in for the transfer track just so uh, just so that you know there's obviously some uh, power to connect the two pieces together there and then we've just got the control panel going in here for the ride operator um, above um, and then down there we've just got uh, you know adding back some more rope as it really you know literally is just as I'm flicking through the just as I'm flicking through the scenery pieces it really is whatever I come across and think oh yeah that that work well it's you know it's about putting that down so that's where we are at the minute and then uh, moving on we're just kind of carrying on as I say selecting a different type of tree this time going through um, and just placing more down. The more you know, the, the more time you just spend doing this, you know, ro rotating the trees, making them different sizes ever so slightly, making them look that little bit different to each other, it makes it look a lot more realistic, and it you know it makes the ride kind of feel at home really. Um, and as I said, the more the more I zoom out, the more you uh, the more you'll see that. Now this is the sign for the ride, um, which you may have seen from the thumbnail, is called Timber. Um, again, go, I'm just sticking with that with that wood theme. Uh, and I, you know, I, I like. I suppose I like the idea of it being wooden, and also the idea that you know, when when wood falls or when you know when something like that falls, you, you shout timber. So you know, the idea that you go down the drop is you, you're falling um, on a piece of wood, basically. So uh, yeah, that's where the that's where the name kind of comes from. So uh, yeah, I thought I'd kind of build a bit of a sign there, and I thought I'd place this on the track. Uh, so well, you know, on, on the side of the wooden supports itself. Um, I, I built a straight line across at the bottom just to make sure that it was all lined up properly because it's uh, you know without doing that it's very hard to uh, make sure that the sign is you know very straight so yeah just making sure it was all lined up nice and nice and level and then just get rid of the um, just get rid of the sign if you need it or or like you know just do what I just did which is just kind of tuck it back in a little bit because I think having a line underneath it here works quite well um, so I was kind of debating where to put this sign. Um, did I want it quite low down? Did I, you know, did I want it on a slant? Um, in the end, I do move it from here. This isn't its final resting place. Um, I end up kind of changing the colours of the supports there just to make the sign stand out a little bit because of the colour, because of the shade of brown it is. Um, and then, yeah, I was just kind of toying with the lighting just to make sure that it can be seen. And then, you know, just make sure the rest of the track is lit up as well as possible. You don't need to light every, everywhere up because you know you'd be installing lights like 50 foot up in the air to get the uh, to get you know the whole track lined up properly but it is um it is always worth putting you know putting lights on like that so you can see um so yeah there's the uh, I, I decided to copy the sign and i wanted it on the floor as well so that it was kind of like and you know ad advertise on the floor and you could see it from a distance on the ride itself so that's what i'm doing here just need to adjust and get the path out of the way um, just so I could do that properly and uh, yeah just move these trees finally and then I just um, you know I just thought well it, lo it looks a little bit thin at the moment 
So the way I kind of got past that is to put um, just to put a few rocks in front of the sign here, um, which is what I'm doing at this point. Um, and this is pretty much um, timber ready to ride. So uh, yeah, really really happy with how this has come together. Uh, really like the theme and how and how it's all turned out. Um, so I think um, other than the you know other than just finish off these rocks here, it is time for a uh, POV just to see what the uh, just see what the guests you know are going to experience when they go on this coaster. It's not the most intense ride in the world, but it's it's something completely different to everything else in the park. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoy um, Timber. Here we go. And there we go that is the uh, ride on timber um i hope you enjoyed that if you did please leave a like and subscribe if you're new um i believe i'm about i think i'm about halfway through this park um so there's still a few more you know a few more attractions to put in uh, big and small um if you've got any suggestions on what you'd like to see what type of coaster you'd like to see maybe then let me know in the comments below but other than that i shall leave you with a few cinematic shots of the coaster as it goes round and I shall see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.